Hi everyone, in this video we're going to walk through solving an example using the Jacobi method, also known as Jacobi iteration by hand. Before we get into the problem here, I would recommend you check out our previous video on Jacobi iteration, for which I will post a link in the description below if you want to check that out. For Jacobi iteration, we need a square matrix that is linear and ideally diagonally dominant. The reason we ideally want our matrix to be diagonally dominant is that we are guaranteed convergence when using an iterative method on linear systems, if our system is diagonally dominant. If our matrix is not diagonally dominant, it doesn't mean that our matrix won't converge, it just means that either the matrix has no unique solution, at which point it won't converge, or we need a better starting guess for our variables so that the matrix will converge. Alright, so we need to solve the following matrix using Jacobi iteration. Before we begin going through the steps of Jacobi iteration, Let's check to see that our matrix is diagonally dominant. A diagonally dominant matrix states that for every row in our linear matrix, the diagonal value is greater than or equal to the sum of the rest of the row. Additionally, we need for at least one of the diagonal values of the matrix to be strictly greater than the sum of the other elements in that row. So as you can see here, it is clear that our matrix is diagonally dominant. Therefore, no matter what we assume for our initial x vector values, our answer will always converge. So let's begin solving this matrix using Jacobi iteration. So firstly, we need to make some assumptions about our x vector values. Commonly, unless more information is given to you, a good starting point is just a zero matrix. So that means that all of our x values we initially assumed are going to equal zero. These values will then aid us to get our next iteration of x values. Now, step two. We must rewrite all of our independent equations in terms of one x value. So the easiest way to understand this, if you're a bit confused, is to actually write out the equations like so, and then solve for the x value. Now as you can see here, every one of our independent equations is now solving for one of our unknown x terms. Now let's create a simple table where we can keep track of all of our x values at every iteration. Now we are ready to begin solving for iteration 1. Just as a side note, you could call this iteration 0 as well, it is really up to you. If you're using MATLAB for example, you would typically call your initial guess iteration 1, as MATLAB does not use zero indexing. That is, all counting begins at 1. Whereas in say Python, all counting begins at 0. So if you were developing a program in Python, it would make sense that your initial guess is labeled 0. So let's plug in our assumed x values into these equations like so and we receive a list of x values that are going to be our guesses in our next iteration. Now we continue this process until we reach a sufficient level of accuracy. This part is much easier in computer programs as you can just tell the program to check every step how close your x values will get you to the right hand side of each of your equations. Just pause the video now and try to perform a couple Jacobi iterations on your own like we just did to make sure that you actually understand. Alright, so after 5 iterations, these are the x values that we arrive at. Although we could keep going at this point, I hope you have an understanding of how Jacobi iteration works at this point. Let's validate that we are converging on an answer though, which you may have to do if you are doing this by hand on a test for example. Let's set all of our equations equal to 0 and then plug in our x values at each iteration. I'm just going to do this for equation 1, but the exact same process should be followed for the other two independent equations. As you can see here, with every iteration, we are getting closer to zero, which is exactly what we want. This proves that we are converging on a solution. And this makes sense as we know that this should happen since we validated earlier that our matrix is diagonally dominant. In the next few videos, I'm going to show you how to perform Jacobi iteration in Microsoft Excel and using Python as programming is much easier and far less tedious way to solve iterative numerical methods. Thank you for checking out this video and I hope it helped your understanding of how we can solve system of linear equations using the Jacobi iteration method. If you enjoyed, please like and subscribe to support the channel. However, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns about the information I provided in this video, please leave a comment down below and I will do my best to address your concerns.